very skill dependent. Silas can actually do quite a lot of work because the Kingslayer and that. So I think it's going to be a bit of a difficult lane state for SK in that mid lane. And then it's going to be a case of if they can then utilize their strong bot lane Lucian. Just take a look at SK Gaming stats at the bottom of your screen. In terms of week one, no first blood, no first arm, negative at 14 minutes. We'll have to come back to that. Copy's already forced backwards. Now the damage reply from Jonghoon and Copy. Summon a heal block. Traded back and forth. Doss forced to flash. Extra kick down to 200. Down to 110. Gets the heal from the ebb and flow. Side steps away. The Mystic Shot. The double. Extra kick. First blood again. And I was about to say this was actually working out fairly well for Copy and Jonghoon. Yeah, I think this is a matchup that tends to go well for the LeBlanc in the early stages. But oh, Jonghoon. Another burst of damage. Jonghoon going to be chunked out low. Doss the target from Copy. Copy stepping forward, firing Mystic Shot off the Mystic Shot inside the minion wave. Exit kick has to be careful. The minions are doing a lot of work. Copy, no flash available to him, can't get in range. And Exit kick wants to stick around. He wants to bait. Here comes Markoon. He has to be flawless from Copy. Does Exit kick try and pick up the assist here? Mystic Shot will connect, denting blows as well as that charge from the Vault Breaker. Soul kill there for Markoon. I mean, nice attempt from Kabe to try and play around the minions, but he was never going to have a chance, really. Secure that tower plate. I want to briefly look at the stats, although they're going to fight. They're going to fight. We'll have to come back. There's no more graphics, Trevor. Aqua Prison will at least throw up Jonghoon. Tidal Wave forces out the summoner heal, chucking out those autos. Flash over the wall. Flash for Kabe too. Here comes Markoon. Cease and desist. Dunk down onto Jonghoon. Now the tower dive. How clean is this? 1-1-3, one, one, coming from behind. Glacial Prison's available to him, and Kobe's dead. Flashing away from the prison, no one's locked in place. SK get two, and the Cannon Barrage gets nothing. And the Cannon Barrage was just seconds away from coming off cooldown. They were trying to... Well, they might still want to try and go for this, right? Markoon has that season desist available. Oh, look at that piercing light damage, and nobody's finding a shot for Astralis. The prison goes wide. Younghoon taking a lot of culling damage. True Shot Barrage unable to secure Exit Kick, and now four versus two. No counter barrage, no teleport, no fin. And Shelly's been dropped. With the help of the Rift Herald, 1-1-3, one, one, and Kobe could be the target. Here comes Certus. W's forward flash available. Tidal Wave captures one. Kobe is obliterated and executed by Exa Kick. Seven kills in 12 minutes. I don't know who DOS made a deal with, but this man is not going down. One three, three seconds until the ultimate available. Markoon hops over the wall, so 2v2 being set up. Irrelevant now. We'll be able to counter strike. Trading back and forth with that Oh, don't oh, fit looking for the solo with the counter! Takes down Irrelevant. First auto, now Irrelevant. Finn is popping off in this top lane. That's two solo kills in his last two games now. Do you believe in Finn's ability to bring back this game? He's up 1.3k. The only member of Astralis ahead of his opposition. But while Finn is doing well, the rest of the map is falling to pieces. Yonghu jumped on as Exit Kick destroys him. With the Nami and that Gale Force, the fifth time this game, Yonghun is down. Yeah, this he's just getting pushed in this whole time, so he's not able to match a lot of the roles from Certus, try and help out with 1-1-3, and again, SK putting on a Masterclass. Yeah, they really are. Copy the next oh. target once again. Piercing Light picks up that kill. Take a look at the damage so far. Exit Kick doing a work, as is this time caught out by the Glacial Prison. No. He stays alive, but for how much longer? Gets the end, the flow, and finally taken down with the flail. Now all of a sudden, 1-1-3, one, one, the boar's looking for sushi. Backup coming in here for Yonghoon as well as Certus. That big, killing Exit Kick, gets yourself that piece. Certus, push that wave all the way for Dayo to uh, pick up. We're going to see yet another trade. Cannon Barrage has dropped. Counter Strike back. Eat the orange. All of a sudden, Finn forced to use that stopwatch. Teleport's being channeled. Dale the first to arrive, but maybe not in time. That's a dead Finn. Here comes Dale. He's managed to hijack the Grandmaster's challenge, but not going to be enough just yet. There's a leap from Irrelevant. Keeps him up. Certus may need to land another chain. No one else can jump in the fray. Members of SK now being jumped on. Irrelevant gets the Counter Strike stun and sidesteps the steal. No one can be enough as Dale finds the kill. This pressure in the middle lane, that tower was secured. So SK playing the map when they're being engaged on. Yeah, trying to see if they can get that tier two in the mid lane. Not quite able to do so, but again, they are at least getting something back. But when Finn is the biggest carry on Astralis right now, and he's losing out in the nearly losing out in the 1v1 to irrelevant, it's not going to be the best spot. Jonghoon, you've oh, done this before! Oh, Exa kick seven 
one. And Jay or Kobe still looking for the tower, but here comes Irrelevant. This is where you got to see what Irrelevant can do. Has that ultimate available? Can he get a multi-man? Remember, the goal difference is significant, but in team fights, the synergies of Astralis comp cannot be denied. Use that stopwatch to buy some time. Tidal wave into the Glacial Prisoner. Irrelevant is the first to fall on behalf of SK, and the culling will not find Jung Hoon. Astralis sneak themselves a kill. And as we take a breath, take a moment, in those head-to-heads, you can see... Time, uh, rather than linking up as a four-man unit. Yeah, it felt like that thin little um, skirmish kind of put pressure and Surge has backed away. He's going to need to use that W to save DC. And this says way downtown! Moku split from the rest of SK, manages to dash back with the Q. True Shot Barrage flies out, Deo has stolen the title away, but now he's facing four members. Make that three as Irrelevant has held multiple members of Astralis back. Deo cannot find kill just yet. Markoon's on a killing spree. Everybody held at bay, but it's K get the kill. That was so nice to a good fight, so close to a nice fight for Astralis, but just not quite able to get the barrel combo for Finn. And SK, they want more. Oh, Finn, Finn, Finn is finito. Taken out by Exekick. Backed up by both Sirtis and Doss with two members down. The 1-1-3, does he even fancy a shot? It doesn't look like it right now. I don't think they can get in if they even want to. I mean, moment three, got to be spotted by Ceratus. They've got the time here, Dagda. They've got the time. That's a route coming out from the chains. Caught by the prison as well. Baron should be secured. It's irrelevant to Sirtis, keeping Astralis at bay. That's so much damage from Sirtis. He's just dinged level 16. And the empowered recalls allow SK to get out. SK on a four game. He's going to hijack that culling with the Baron empowered minions. All five members of SK, 6,000 gold up. And they just brute force their way, as Atlas would say, smacking Astralis with it. Feels like way. they've really doubled down on that identity and have managed to get these big wins for themselves. Four extra kick, and now they want to try and push it home further. Oh, goodbye. Goodbye, indeed. Um, I think with the additional range from that rapid fire cannon, the movement speed from Nami, just how far ahead. 4.6 thousand gold the lead. Exit kick is definitely the man in the moment here for SK. Finn gets punched in the face by those giant gloves and another inhibitor is falling. SK are moments away from securing group stage or picking up a five game winning streak. And I said at the top of show today that this is the team that could be looking at top two. But this type of play, they're definitely making a case for it. Yeah, I think it's going to be a big case of trying to see if they're able to win this game, what happens at group stage. Because I think they definitely have a very defined style of, hey, we want to set up extra kick and toss. And I'm curious to see what happens when they get to the next stage. Teams are able to pair, prepare for them in that best three. But right now, in this game, they look absolutely spectacular. Three gaming's opponents playing Astralis today, XL tomorrow, and then Fnatic on Monday as 1-1-3 one, one, may go down. If SK win all three of those games, and that's very likely, they have 92% of remaining scenarios where they lock top two. And having a top two place means they'll be first seed in the group. They get to pick their opponents. I'm sure we can get all three of these outer terrors down and sets up well, but now they want to go for more. Dun, 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 dun. The engage onto Yong Hoon. Here comes Irrelevant from behind. The tidal wave as well as the Counter-Strike stun doing so much work. And Sorters forced to run for his life from Deor Silas. Multiple members of SK are just burning through the HP bars, but it is at the cost of Irrelevant's life. Execute flies forward before Kobe gets one back. Now all of a sudden, Deor trying to do what he can. The last man standing for Astralis into three members of SK Gaming. They get Drake Soul picked up by SK Gaming, last ditch effort, inside Baron, no flash for Irrelevant. And here comes the rest of SK. There is a split off, it looks like there's a siege. Finn has been able to take down Sirtis, but it's at the cost of his life. Now all of a sudden, SK have lost another, SK have lost a third. The Baron is still available, no ways. Astralis, they're only down 4k, they're down the soul. They've turned their attention to the Baron. That was perfect from Astralis, playing the choke point, finding Sirtis first, now exit kick, but SK, they're not going to try and contest. They're going to try and take down these structures in the enemy base. We have got a game on our hands as Irrelevant. We'll try to take down at least one of these inhibitors. The empowered recalls will come in momentarily. The Baron still being secured. Irrelevant can jump on Tsyonghun and he does. Counter-Strike doesn't find its target. Dayo can steal the Grandmaster's might as Irrelevant's no flash available. He should go down. No, hops over onto the ward. Now turning his attention to try take out Yong Hoon. Who's left in the I don't know anymore. Dayo takes down Irrelevant. Okay, 
Dagda, zoom out now with Baron. There is no way the Shards can turn this one around. Pushing inside the base. Have they done it? Have they got the power? Baron and Pop Minions being used to equalize that mid lane inhibitor. They back away. I think... You keen in here, though. Now your Baron buff is gone. Oh, Glacial Prison! That's a good prediction, but there's nothing to follow! There's no one to follow that up! SK Smoke! Oh, 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 oh. Finn lands a beautiful barrel! Forcing SK to retreat! He takes down Searchers once more! Finn has... Fire game. They're going in for the final push! Two super minions pouring onto the Nexus Toast. The first has been cleared. Dale has teleported into the fray. Look for the barrel! Look for the barrel! Oh. Doss loses 80%! He gets oh. a to the fountain, all of a sudden, SK are ranted and running for their lives. They've lost three, looking for no two more. All of a sudden, Astralis cannot find Irrelevant just yet. The Nexus Toad still stands, the minions are alive. Ten seconds before Surgis is up. Irrelevant is buying so much time. He's finally taken out as Malkun gets one back on the Yonhu, but it doesn't matter. The Nexus Toad is the focus. Can Surgis pull off something magical? I don't think he can. It's over. How did Astralis do it? They took down SK. How? There is no other word in my brain except how. Astralis with the miracle comeback in the last week to try and get themselves into groups. And look at the reactions from the players. My heart is pounding. My brain is confuddled. And I do not understand how that worked out. It's going to be really interesting. I did just get confirmation that this is VTO's career first Jace game as yeah, well. It is. So he's busting out a few of these in the game so far and in the season so far, actually. And I'm really curious to see how these two uh, compositions... Wait, or sorry, the ward here is fine. You just want to see if you can get push for buff, but Yankos... Oh, the engage comes out. Oda tries to buff for it. Flash used by Yankos. The stun lands. And Oda's been able to put enough distance away. Does he fancy himself a chance with that Patrick and Targamas? They've got the cleanse and the ignite on the side of Heretics. And Odo's backing away. Odo could teleport in if needed. That's a two-man knockup. Stand aside. Mercer takes a couple tower shots and first blood secured by Jack Spectra. Now Targamas is the next target. Yanko steps forward. One auto. The second, the third, the fourth. It's a double kill for Jack Spectra and a flawless dive for Heretics. And a 2-0 Draven off the back of that as well. So well executed by Heretics. And especially when we've been... VTO has been able to push all the way into VTO. And that's a big call. My cocoon is all of a sudden going to land. Ruby's getting burnt. Shockwave onto three, but there's not enough damage to follow it up. BTO will get out of damage range as Cersei will repel up and drop back down. First want kill to give him these resources. He needs to land that poke. He needs to make use of Jace's kit, his first game on it. Gigantic minion wave in the bottom lane. BTO is making his way forward. That unbreakable wall is up. Now it's timed out. Piercing arrow flies forward. Jack Spectra's got Whirling Death available to him in the exhaust. Insta cleanse! The death whirls forward as Jack Spectra gets a third. Continues to step backwards. Spinning axe off the spinning axe. And he should be taken out here by VTO. The minions finally do it. And the shutdown gold to boot. And this is the video that I've been missing where he's able to get pressure amid. Roam down to his bottom. 3, we fancy ourselves a fight to Dagda. Yeah, I mean, look at Jack Spectra. This is the guy that has to carry Blood Thirst to completed. He's the first one with an item, but... XL, just looking for poke. Where's the engage? Mercer, quickness available to him. Can hop over the wall. XL are grouped up. They're holding on to the trigger instead. Team Heretics will secure that one. He's looking for a now potential fight. Chain of corruption starts to spread. The quickness will slow down and Jack Spectra forced to flash away. Unbreakable has now timed and whirling death. Burns down the HP bars as Yankos is focusing the spider. Jack Spectra gets another, this time onto Xerse. They get the dragon and they get the kill. I don't know in what world you, know, you want to... You can see it on your screens right now. Ultimately, I think maybe fancying what they could get on a surprise. Accelerated shot bars, bring the hammer down! The Mercurial Hammer and Vitio finds the solo kill! And this was all you had to let Vitio Cross maps happen and again setting up for the dive. This time Targumas and Patrick, they're respecting it. Yeah, but look, Ruby's on his way, you've got Vitio as well. This is going to turn into a much bigger fight. Glacial Prison instantly cleansed away for the knockout and the quickness. Patrick is just about to drop, but the Unbreakable is buying enough time. Finally, Jack Spectra gets the kill. The shield is broke from that blood as it continues to for the spinning axes. Here comes Odo with the backup of Vitio! Mercer's down as a double for Vitio. The tower may be secured with the help of the Rift Herald, though. And I think net advantage Team Heretics. The thing is, this Jace is getting fed 4-0-1. Trying to play through these side lanes to keep it in check. You can see Ruby's just doing her... Ooh, hang on. Well, there's the flash away. Patrick fires the 
chain of corruption will not work. Odo's already channeled. Fall of the Forge God and Mercer Ross to run for his life. Flashes underneath the tower. Jack Spectre using spinning axe off the spinning axe. Backed up by a glacial prison. He gets another. The sixth of the game. So they forced a flash away to safety. The shockwave is gigantic from Ruby. Trying to set up more. Poke doesn't matter if you cannot stand your ground. And Heretics find two kills and they get some damage on this tower. But take a look at Vito. Not done yet. Accelerated shock blast finding their targets. Kinney weave another shot onto Ruby. I think there's too many minions in the way and Ruby's back down. Well, the uh, pressure on Targamus is huge because that shield does not last oh, long no. enough. Stand aside, finds two, buying some time. So he's able to at least get away for now, but Targamus left inside of the jungle. Kill another one secured to Jack Spectra. So many of them donated eight kills for Heretics. All eight of them on Draven. <laughs> it doesn't really... It's actually been the gold that Jack Spectra has been massively behind him. Like 1.8k when we look at the 14 minute mark. But we're going again. Look at that. Yankos has found VTO. Prison into Shockwave. And Mercer's able to fly to safety. While that's going on, thumbs up in the chat as Ebby's going to push Odawamne back. Not certain if we're going to get a replay of this. Just before we do, though, I want to bring up the percentage scenarios. That will happen. If Heretics win this game, they lock top eight, but so do G2, BDS, and Mad Lions. All three of those teams waiting in the wings, waiting to secure themselves the group stage. It's being led by Jack Spectra. It's a 7,000 gold. Up, but when you can take the big purple worm just after the 20-minute mark, you might as well. Well, Vizio can shoot some fish in a barrel. Teleport's available to him. Has been channeled. He has arrived. 4,000 HP, Ebby's buying as much time as he can. Mercer's no quickness, it's too late, it's too late, it's too little, it's too late, but what more can Exile do? The Searing Charge knocks up a few as Jack Spectre's locked inside the pit, but the stun is huge. Ebby wails away on Vito. he's forced to run for his life. Ruby's one second for the shockwave, pulls Odo back, and all of a sudden Heretics are wrecking Exile. Goodbye, Patrick. Two more kills to Jack Spectra. 11 of the team's third. Managing to make back-to-back -back playoffs last year. Now trying to dig themselves out of a gigantic hole. Patrick and Vitio should be able to pick up this kill here. Finally secure it's Vitio that does so, but at what cost? At what cost? Inhibitor turrets are falling. And I don't know how you deal with an 11, 2, and 0. Draven that is protected by a Sejuanian Orion place. Tiebreaker games will happen, regardless of a hit hit. If two teams are tied at, I bet they say one and eight. If that is uh, the decider for eight, they will play that game. Right now, multiple people knocked up. How did that happen? All of a sudden, Exile have found the killer to Jack Spectra, but there's not much more in the tank. Odo is drop low, so seeing targets run for their lives. The Wombo worked for one onto Jack Spectra. They got the a second onto Mercer. The tower finally falls, and Abby's looking to chase down Zerse and Targamas. Two members of XL running for their lives. The inhibitor will be the focus. A last ditch effort. They get a few kills, but not much more. But well, they might get a couple of towers here. They will get the inhibitor at least on the way out, but XL will hold on to a little bit more. Abby got to jump away as well, but. I mean, this is where you can kind of see Heretics once more just abuse LEC, but along with BDS, Mad Lines, and G2. So a number of teams looking ahead to those best of threes if Heretics close this out. And right now, Heavy's on the tower. Well, the Forge Guard comes out, knocks up a couple members as Yankos backs away. He's thrown out the prison himself. Mercer will jump away to safety. Odo is dropped once again, just standing in front, and Jack Spectre firing away. Maybe he's trying to usher these minions forward. Supers in the middle lane, supers in the bottom lane. Inhibitor taking top lane. Dagda, this is a League of Legends by the numbers. I mean, it's League of Legends by unfair numbers as well. They're winning four versus fives. Ebby's just killing your Nexus turrets. Heretics want to end this now, and they are just swarming into the base of XL. And Jack Spectra continues to stack up those passives. 12 and 3, four items into the two items of Patrick. So you're going to have three items of VTO. The Nexus turret has fallen. Shock Plus doing some work, but simply not enough. Shockwave is still available for Ruby as the final Nexus turret falls. Focusing onto the Nexus. Repelling up from Zerse, dropping down. Evi gets a two-man start and pops Patrick. There's not enough damage to follow. And with XL being eliminated in their base, Team Heretics advance to groups. A lot of fans in the LEC going to be happy to see Heretics pick up this win. If you're a G2 fan as well, going to be delighted to know that they have been locked. But that was a very well-controlled game from Heretics, which I think a lot of fans of Heretics needed to see out of. BDS, G2 Esports.
Mad Lions and Team Heretics are all now locked into the group stage. The thing is, every single game is still relevant and important because there are four pools of seeding. Um, just because now Tilus can hook in early and force those trades, and I feel like over time Lushanami will win, but early game can be interesting. Mm -hmm. What I really want to highlight here is that Zaya. Her ult is so powerful against enemy team. Only three comes. They know that he found only top side. And who from Mickey? How does he hit every single one? He's just too damn good. Has someone looking for the root here? Can't oh even my no, don't, don't tell me. Don't ticking. tell me it's an oil to be two kill. Uses the heal. It, it is a two v two kill. Oh, it's a two v two. It is not going to be enough. Is it? 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 In the LEC, four minutes in, BDS come out on top, two kills to the Lucian Nami. <laughs> and look at the player comes, Crowny and the Labrov popping up the top lane. I'm trying to get that wave in, can't quite get it under these guys. Go go this time Ike is here, Ike has flash, will he commit? Yes, Labrov is dead. There's he no is. counter play, so many feathers. So many feathers in the wave coming in, that'll be really nice for G2's bot lane. But you talked about the mid push, uh, oh, Yankel. No. Is that one of those things where you're like. I mean, you should be, right? That's the trigger point. At least Hansama shouldn't be able to farm um, these minions. Well, they're fighting it. Okay. Okay. Mickey going in. Bubble does connect, but so far. Okay, she is going in. Mickey yeah. has no flash. Mickey has no flash. Mickey's going to get stunned here. Mickey. And Lucian, Mickey. Lucian dashing in. Mickey. Lucian doing his combat. Lucian gets another kill. Three kills for Lucian. You know what that means, right? Well, yeah. I think. Um, thank you, guys. Yeah, so I know we are being nice. No, no, we're not. No, 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 it's great. So, an ult from. He could have ulted him yeah, the into the tower, yeah. yeah. We then, then chain him afterwards, weird. see if he can land the root. Ooh, okay, maybe use his TP, he has ult oh, here. What? what? What was that damage? Sheen. Okay, Sheen okay, so, things. I mean, that's... Okay, yeah, people... Okay, 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 there's no TP. He's, level, he's close to level 6, maybe okay, I think on a minion. he definitely gets that kill, yeah. Is it worth getting yeah. level 6 quickly? Yeah, he's... Oh no, he barely doesn't get it, yeah. But I think he still gets... Okay, Adam has flash stun. Wait, Adam is trying to turn it around, but bro, he's level 6 now. Okay, he's gonna flash this side, flash this side, flash this side. Close, close. I mean, close. that was well played. That was well played. That was well played. Oh, BDS bot looking for hands. Okay, oh, okay. Sure. Hansama still up. level five. Kavni is level oh, six. Oh, Kavni flashes. Yes. Okay, okay. Oh, Hansama is dead. So that is That's four 2 kills. And like full calling, making force to flash. I'm not well, sure three. if he needed three 2v2 kills. Yep. I feel like he, he wants to make sure his bot lane doesn't like completely go into like Snowball Oblivion, right? And uh, I don't think Lucian can easily dash in against Marvel. Ooh. Hansama, Very nice cool. Hansama still has flash. This is deep. Okay, this is very, very deep, very nice. So look at Caps flanking and one shooting Labros. Nuclear Int, Ultink, Triple Three lock people. up. Hook Mids, hook in, and Shio is dead. He's dead. Make it as dead as well. Okay, five kills for Lucian, not too bad. Francis but if Lucian dies, dies here, Lucian oh. dies, does a huge shutdown. Who gets it? Who gets it? It's getting oh, a kill to Caps. 700 gold. That was really deep by BDS. I mean, that's a huge mistake. Ulting the Zion oh, Shio's well. Okay, Nuclear Int has flash, so I think you should be fine. Yeah, it's okay. Well, wow, but that was uh, that was very good positioning from G2. They flank him from every side. Drives coming from the Raptors and okay, Adam mid lane. Why is he looking game where he can really, really step up and carry the game? Definitely it's 11 minutes though, guys. So um, yeah. Ooh, we yeah. oh, flash towards the bottom side. Okay, okay, okay. He's gonna oh, end up nice. on Crowny nowhere to go. Tries to trade back onto Hansom, but he just can't do it. Meanwhile, the chase onto the bottom underneath the tower. We will say wow. goodbye to you, Yankos, as we it's say. It's really goodbye. quick, and look at how Caps is playing. He's pushing in midwaves, hovering in his own vision. He's going to rise all to sides. He's not going to run to sides. We'll see a collapse here from G2. There's the Rizal coming in. And Sama has to pop the Feather Storm. Colin's going to hit him. Tidal Wave used as well. TP now invested. The Realm Walk will caps to the fray. Cheo trying to escape already. The root onto LeBrov, and he's going to fall. Knock up onto Crowny as well, and G2 collapse. Broken Blade flashing forward underneath the tower, trying to get them. Crowny loads. Tanks up an Astro Meat, but it's three kills. Over two G2 in the top lane. They can just collapse quicker. Caps is ready with the Realm Warp from mid. Broken Blade has TP advantage. So what can BDS get done in the solo lanes now to merit any kind of numbers disadvantage in this top side or even trying to force something up there in the first place? Adam might be able to get a full bot tower. There's no plates left, so Nuke won't get anything in mid. Drake's up in 40 seconds and Cryo Caps is going to go through bot. Yikes Ultimate's coming up now. BDS first to the river. Caps at two items, little Bob has been hooked once again, and the Bob just doesn't get a chance to move. Tries to flash away, but he's not into the wall. Shao now going up to Broken Blade. Adam coming in with a counter strike as well with the Nature's Grasp. What well, locks them in place. G2 continue to rip to BDS. One for one so far. Adam flashes the wall, but they lose Pryo in the river. Mid lane does go down to that Rifto. BDS actually trying to just barrel down mid here, get a tier two if they can. This is great from BDS. It's a one for one. It took so long to kill Broken Blade that they couldn't turn the fight. They had to escape. They lost to Drake, yes, but they got two towers for it. This Herald might even crash onto the Inib Tower. They won't be able to pick that up. It should regen slowly. Mickey trying to pull it away to let Caps take it down, and he will. 
but you can see the amount of damage BDS has when they can connect to their target. They don't want to make sure they can stick on where you, you start to look at how the lane assignments are going to go, Cajun. You know, after 20 minutes, tends to be that point as Sheo does face check into Mickey here, pulled back with the dredge line. Sheo tries to get away, but look at the damage down onto him. Death charge being used as well. The it's tidal wave to try and counter second. Hans Summer with the feather storm. Sheo able to escape without using the, the flash. Stolen nature's grass TP coming in, and Adam will be able to jump Whoa. in, but the feathers pull them back. Adam down to half HP, and Cats is really going to start opening up now. He's sprinting towards them with the phase rush. The bubble connects, but the damage from the right is absurd. Realm walk forward. Where are you going to go, BDS? Because G2 are on the hunt. Cavs still chasing forward. Sheo falls to an overload, and BDS have met their match. G2 will wipe them off the face of the rip. And they're going to go straight towards the Baron as well. 5-4-1. The game is absolutely blown wide open. And as much as they struggled in bot search, there was no real way BDS were getting out of there. And G2 have shown us, at least in this game, that they can come back from a deficit. Every time they've fallen behind so far in the LEC, they have ended up losing that game. As the Jax continues to push, Broken Blade doesn't have TP and neither does Caps. You don't want to split up with Baron. So I think eventually Broken Blade could just take this mid tower and base himself, or G2 can move mid and Broken Blade can base Adam. If he recalls here, he can TP behind G2, right? So face checking into a sapling every single time, and as much as it's tank Maokai, it's still demonic in race tank Maokai. Like, it's so difficult to do. Now, Sheo is going to face oh. check. Lacroix, well, once again, the one who took the color coming out as well. And BDS try and make their final stand. Blast Cone out. Double root from Nuke. Hansama now stepping forward. The hook once again lands onto Nuke. Adam trying to get away from Broken Blade and Caps, but he just can't escape. Stops time for a second, but all that will give him is a perfect view of his death oh. as he falls to Caps. Crowny now trying to escape the Aqua Prison just short. Yike on the flank. Twisted advance into the knockback. Caps gets a double. The knob into the wall. A triple for Caps. And G2 once again just clean up in the top lane. And that's the inevitability of setup versus short range. Mickey just has to wait for one person to walk up. Eventually, BDS have to check the direction in these fights. Pretty much impossible for them with G2 playing as well as they are in caps as well. Has had a quiet split so far. Has had a couple of games where he's looked good, but I don't think Claps has really been on the menu. This ability for them if they want to join up with their team very quickly. Of course, they can just run across two inhibitor tower inhibitors now open yeah and uh that's that's the push you know that's all you need to do is g2 they're not explosive but all you have to do is slowly chip away at them yeah. as you say four cannons buffed up they're just gonna sit there so i think g2 are just gonna keep them buffed up and let yep. them do the, look at the damage it's doing here comes a fifth cannon as well just blowing <laughs> through this tower <laughs> g2 you need to hit it yeah Rupert's and hits onto nuke there the stopwatch is gonna try and delay the inevitable nature's grass coming out as well and nuke has already fallen g2 let the cannons do the work and chase Onto the fountain, Yike will take the second Nexus Tower. G2 toying with BDS a little bit here as they close it. this one out. Another hook from Mickey. Tanks the fountain for a second. Adam going in, but the flash away from Hans Summer will oh, keep a rush. Catch for the dive, oh, okay. for the dive oh. but the Nexus falls. Who hit the Nexus? Who oh. was it ended? Caps was calling for the fountain dive there. <laughs> Must have been either Hans or Broker Blade that went for the end. Caps can't pad the stats, but yeah. BDS looked good for the first five to ten minutes. A lot of action around the bot side. Crowny was 4-0 at one point. Yeah. Really big lead on that bot side, but they threw it all away towards that uh, that that invade towards the red buff. It gave yeah. kills over to Caps, gave him a big shutdown. Nuke lost mid push, and without mid push, they couldn't really contest bot side anymore. And then you know, Yike just kept revisiting and revisiting, trying to set Juani, making sure that he can take away that old look for engages. Skirmish heavy. That's often a struggle, though. When we t see a team reaching for answers in draft rather than having a cohesive strategy going in, often you see a draft. Yeah, barrel around everywhere, isn't it? Yeah, you know One it's got. Don't even swap oh. arms. Oh, oh, oh. Right. Gets the stun. Little chunk. <laughs> Misk is like, cool. Thanks, mate. Oh, Twin Fangs ghost. ghosting forward, not just fast as well. Humanoid trying to get in. Rasmus has to flash away. Alioya across the wall keeps Humanoid as bay as well. Spectral more hits once fighting. again. Rasmus trying to fight back against Alioya here. Now. Lyra does have the flash, but he's kind of locked in place. Niski stepping what forward. What is going on? Humanoid oh. able to get back in. Niski still alive. Razzle takes oh, him trying to get the reset. Possession, but cannot get the reset. A double for Niski. Poison ticks through. Wow, Fnatic were so hesitant to take that fight. Hilly? Whoa, Hilly. 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 Flash, Molly Morph, and splat that cat. Massive 2v2 kill there for Mad Lions. Kill over to Hilly. Instantly punishes Rux the second he's not on top. Rux is like, okay, guys, like, it's, it's a bit of a farm lane. Maybe we can get some damage Bro. down. Humanoid now looking up towards happening? the top side. Wait, <laughs> chasing. You guys know which side of the map is yours. What is going on? Lockdown no, does no, have the Razor. flash, but you can't get away from the Ruthless Predator. Wonder and Humanoid on the chase. Niski trying to push in the mid I feel like chasing him. I can turn this. They're playing Renix and Sejuani. I don't think <laughs> Humanoid wants this fight now. I would be a bit worried as Razork here. If he gets found, he's dead. 
Gotta find Gaze on the way by Humanoid. Niski turns it oh, back no. around the stun onto Razok and Alioia's on his way. You can't escape the miasma. Niski survives. Conquest stacking up as well as they turn onto Humanoid. He's dead as well. Niski healing up and Humanoid nowhere to go. Another double for the Cassia. This Cassio is out of control. Fennec tried to as double well. it. And he's got his new Nikes as well. Yeah. Don't think those classify as Nikes. No, that's like, like sandals. New Balance or something. Yeah. Humanoid's been ganking top on cooldown. This yeah. is the second or third time he visited here. Dominus from Chasey. Humanoid steals it away. He'll kill, kill, damage. He'll, he'll kill the minions for a second there. The side yeah, doesn't have much damage. Chasey's running away. Wonder's trying to act. He's gonna flash. flash with the spellers with the stun comes oh. out. And Chasey still gets the kill. And Chasey turns it over. Humanoid. Dead. I think they're both Everything dead. Everything is going to pieces for Fnatic. Oh. Humanoid survives. But Chasey gets out of the 1v2 with a kill. You know how there's, you know, April Fools. Yeah. You got Christmas. Mm -hmm. uh, your Thanksgiving. Sure. Is there unlucky day? I mean, Fnatic have been in well, it for three weeks. <laughs> we're not even allowed yes, to watch anymore. Is. It's not fair. I'm sorry, guys. This show has a PG-13 rating. Wait, what is rating? that timing, though? <laughs> this, this, this is an R-rated show. I apologize to you all, but we cannot show what is happening on the Rift right now. I have seen I less see gruesome either. affairs in a &E. We will show you a replay of the break screen because it's still oh, grotesque. Guys, do it again. Wait, wait, that's Chasey. Wait, wait, no, that was Razork as Chasey. Yeah, okay, so Razork killed Chasey. Yep. Yep. Niski killed Razork. Niski has. Well, that was just a out of left field. Yeah, well, you've yeah, been taking like, L's today, so I thought I'd just, just, just handing me them on cool. Wonder's ganking bot. <laughs> okay, here we are. <laughs> All right, so Wonder's gonna gank here. Ooh, flash away. Hillasang rooted up. Pops the wild growth, but he will fall. Kazi was able to get the flash away. Hillasang still very low. The heal. Hillasang gets away. No way. Fed the sword flash. Okay, Reckless okay. gets him in the end. Well, Wonder Kills. has yeah. taken up the response. He dove. Chasey's on the way up as well. It's a three man. Okay, he Humanoid, no, no flash. Fun. He has ult though. Steals away. Glacial Prince. Is this the outplay of the century? Where's he gonna go, Kadrill? No, it Where's is not. Where's he gonna go? <laughs> Wait, Niski's tanking. Oh, Maybe Wonder. Wait, okay. what just happened? <laughs> Did he drop aggro there for I a second? He dropped aggro. Okay, okay Razor's here. Well. For... You will not die alone, I think is the <laughs> motto of this Fnatic <laughs> We team. ride together, we die together. <laughs> fanatic for life. Razor just for Fnatic, and at the moment, it's looking like they're likely not going to play boss. Hilly, no flash. They the final chapter in. Hilly will fall. Razzle gave to pick it up. The Yumi helping him out with a little bit. Okay. Okay. Polymor. Humanoid's here too. Alioria's here. Humanoid's joined the fray. Alioria's going to keep. You have some fight left in you. They have been finding a couple of picks here and there. Reckless has got his middle. Blue. Red Razzle will get the red. Alioria getting away with Hilla Sang here. Take this fight. Fine what? That's hits on to Alioria. The chase continues. Spectral more coming out as well. But the Glacial Prison turning around. Better run gets him. The Razzle gets up. As Niski is. Oh, it's not done yet. No flash on Reckless. He has, has to, to ult the storm though. Yeah. Has to ult the Q there. Niski hits Alioia, but he ults gets the Radiant Virtue proc and then he's fine. Doesn't even have to flash. Wonder knocks back Chasey. Here comes Humanoid, both level 9. There is a Grump there. He's going to use the slice through Wonder. Don't know if he got the reset on that as Humanoid chases forward, flashes in. The Dominus Poctus. Chasey tries to turn this one around in the 1v2. He's won this before. Oh, the no. healing no. from the Gore Drinker. Not again. And Humanoid is just burned down. Kingslayer. Oh, man. Chasey slices through him. This is the second time. All costs. Yeah. And they're going to get top tier two by the looks of it. Wonder might throw it out. No, he can't throw out the ult. There's no one close enough. Okay, Here comes it. This is it. All in for Fnatic. Try and get some kills. Final chapter coming out. Nisky able to dodge to the side. Rexus with quick cleanse away from the Glacial Prism. Nisky's oh. going back with the Petra. Gets on it. Fast Storm being used. Nisky exhausted. Shut down. The flash from Reckless. The Shredder goes over to Razork. And now the fight can really begin because Nisky's already down. And that's so much of Mad Lion's gold. Reckless trying to heal up a little bit. Chasey going back in. Razork diving forward, diving back. Elyria on the front line now as Kazi still untouched throughout the entirety of this fight is bolstered by Hillasang. As well, I mean, Niski's run of ages is finished. Yeah. Humanoids hasn't even started. That's the biggest issue they have right now. He's on his way, man. <laughs> he's, he's trying. He's trying to stack it up. We saw G2 actually in this position just push down at the bottom lane, but I think Mad Lions don't want to do that. They're just going to look for the inhibitor. 18 they minutes to take it. Mm. What do we think about the 18 minute inhibitor? Well, I think in this game, I think it's fine. I'm going to be honest, because I think they have enough tools to close out the game. TP behind. Humanoid has TP, Glacial Prison going wide. Wonder the target though, he's trying to get away. Does have the barrel, Chasey coming in the barrel though. Ruthless Predator is enough into the CC chain here. Wonder, nowhere for him to go. And Mad Lions pick up another kill, immediately ping over towards the big purple worm. Yeah, I think Humanoid will try to get this bot tier one. It's an objective bounty, then try to base. He needs a little bit of mana and then TP in. That's it, Fnatic do want to contest this or they can just try to push mid and get this mid tier one. I think what is the call? At the moment, it looks like they're going for the bounties, maybe for a steal, possibly from Razork. Reckless now stepping forward. Humanoid 
yet to base. This is your moment, Razork. Can and you make Medic eat the sock? <laughs> Look at all of Mad Lions immediately nope. jump across the wall. Keep Razork at bay, keep Fnatic at bay. And Mad will secure the Baron. 10,000 gold there, lead now. And trying to defend another wave in the mid lane now. And Mad Lions are just pulling Fnatic all over the map. Wonder still looking for this engage. Humanoid going in oh. the battle onto Niski, but he doesn't even get knocked back. Glacial Prism being used now as Niski starts the offensive Mad Lions on the chase, on the prowl here. The roots coming out from Reckless. And even the final chapter just used to disengage, but this is three inhibs for Mad Lions. 23 and a half minutes in, and they are not stopping yet. Might be over. They still have Cassiel to work with, and the Lulu World Towers are being chunked out. Only three caster creeps left, but another wave coming through mid, another wave coming through bot. They need to get this bot in him again. Now go down, Chaser will start it up. Elioya there as well. Fnatic do have defenders advantage here. They can get back, they can heal up a little bit quicker, but Mad Lions aren't really taking too much damage right now as Niski opens up once again with the Twin Fangs. A Medusa S cosplay here from Niski. Mythological in his power. And no real defense for Fnatic. Baron has expired, so these waves no longer buffed up. Super minions on their way, though. Double in the top and double in the bot lane. Petrifying gets stolen away, but it doesn't hit anyone. Razor gets the stun onto Elioya, but once again, Matt just disengage and look for their opportunity to take down these Nexus turrets. Fnatic, last chance saloon on this game, at least. As the weekend may be getting away from them right from the very start, they still need to make it into the top eight. They have never missed playoffs before, but Mad Lions are not giving them an opportunity to breathe. Elioya falls low, but heals up right at the end with a heal, I think, there from Kazi. Niski kills off Humanoid. Fnatic just retreat to their fountain, but the Nexus is not even the target for Mad Lions. Instead, they want more blood. Reckless kills off Hidasang, but there's little he can do as he can only watch as Mad Lions secure the win. Five wins on the board now for Mad Lions means they tie up with G2. We'll see how Vitality's game goes on later today and see if they can tie up for first place. But with that win, SK, I believe they lock the yep. group stage. So SK will be watching from home. Very happy about that one. They're now locked. I suppose need some self peel Need some help from the Meganar most likely. And the Azir ult will be used to push away the Renekton boss as well. So we'll see what happens. We'll see. Perks is uh, LeBlanc is something to be feared. You know, all time, 36 games. Pink Ward is in the bush there. They'll spot him out just about now. Larson doesn't have TP. Do they have the damage for this dive? Shigen is just going to run away. I think he thinks he can Runs tank. back in. Gonna get stunned up, flashes away. Unable to build up the Meganar with another jump. Photon has to flash as well. And Shigenda survives the, uh, the top dive. And is able to walk away, trying to build up that Meganar. Won't Here, find Varus, it. Ash, keep range, keep them safe. Oh, Stack up objectives. Arrow. Here comes the arrow. Ooh, that is perks. right between Corey the eyes. Going in, but a great Glacial Prison, and Wait, the survivor was just short. What? Couldn't quite get in range. Glacial Prison stopped last from being close enough. Bow flashes over the wall. And even though the arrow connects, they couldn't quite find more. Neon there with final chapter chain of corruption, immediately cleansed by the Vitality bot lane. How did that Azir ult not hit? I thought he was just in range, because it obviously has a little bit of a pushback, because they come from behind, right? Doesn't land onto perks. And uh, Maran can't get the ult off in time, I presume. Charge comes in, they get plates over, but... Get my little shovel out and I start farming. Well, they might farm Photon's health bar in a second. Marwang doesn't have it's ult up in a sec, it's about five seconds. Last here as well. Photon pops the Dominus, Ammo just wide. The TP coming in as well with Photon. Emperor's divided down. Perks looking to Shigenda, who underneath the tower will fall. Yeah, no flash from the earlier play on the dive. He can't really get out. Marwang's ult just came up. Shigenda was a little bit hesitant there, but the, the worrying thing for Vitality here is your top lane's losing trades. Mm -hmm. Shigenda has vision and is pushing in the Renekton, while also they're getting Dragon to and protect him. That's him in the corner. But yeah, Bo doesn't have ultimate. Oh, Neon. They might get comps. They might kill him, actually. Calm. Booted up with final chapter. Cleanse. Flash away, but Neon's gonna flash to chase him down, and Neon will get his first kill of the game. Really good play there from Vitality's bot. Following Photon to catch out Shigenda, so really good map awareness there. Here Arrow. comes the engage. Perks dashes, but the flash bolt breaker into the cease and desist. Perks trying to survive, but he can't oh. get away from the piercing arrow. Very clean, as you say. Take him to the laundry as Mawang now tries to retrieve Photon? the TP coming in. Photon oh going in with the Dominus. No, Mawang doesn't have the Q or the ult. Shigenda now joins the party. Larson coming in from the side as well, and Bo and Neon are split from Photon. But they will be able to walk away. Should be, though, another objective secured for Koi. So really a full send there by the Renix and was it? TP in, I'm going in, I don't want to waste TP, no. flash over the wall, ult everything. Oh, Larson. Oh, oh Chainsy C next. The Chainsy C is enough to kill off the Emperor. Bow now stepping forward, the Rift Hell secured by Maorang. Right, Tatsy, you're gonna go any further. Megan are always a risk. Perk's only just spawning, it doesn't have behind, but now he has that blade. 
Lance up, building towards that Prowler's Claw. They might get a top tier one as well. So this despite... first tower of the game. Oh, oh. TP's coming. Well, this TP is arrow, really... There's an arrow, there's an arrow, there's an arrow! Oh, and it catches it! From long range, Robin Hood from the base, Trimby! Kills off his enemy support! Oh, Kaiser, right between the eyes, lands on top of him. No one there to block it. Malrang, we saw that. A while. Maybe Trimby. they're going for another arrow Vi combo. Here we go. He's gonna miss, but will Malrang say, oh, he dodges back! He beats the observers! Oh, he can execute, actually. He can. Will he get it? Trimby's on the way. will tag him, I think. There's a volley, there's a volley, there's a volley! Yeah, Trimby tags him and Perth will give the kill to Trimby. Yeah, Azir gets the assist, though, and there's a wave. Is he gonna use it? He's using it right behind. This TP is a bit confusing, the timing! The arrow! Oh, steps straight into it! A sitting duck! For Trimby and another kill over to Koi, and now Vitality needs to try and fight this Drake, but you're a man down, you are Perks down, and Koi will step forward. Perks really struggling this game, and you, he's against Vi, which is really good at locking down uh, the LeBlanc, and Trimby's arrows are just heat seeking towards a target, most notably Perks. They're on jungle, he needs to get around this dragon pit, they've already started it up, and Koi, yeah, no which direction. Before they even get there. Yeah, it's gone, they're it's way too late, this 6, objective, they have no chance. Just impossible. Great ma management by Koi to make sure that Vitality had no way in, but a little bit late there by Vitality. A bit of greed from Perks, perhaps, to take the tower. Now, the arrow's already used. Marilyn for Perks, but he dodges away from it. Bow and Neon going to try and retreat. Shigenda goes forward. The tower still stands. Done. Flash Nar, a possibility here for Shigenda. Arrow about half the way off cooldown. Perks dodges across the wall and dashes back. And that's the poke you're talking about. If you can find a flank, Perks does have some damage under his belt, but at the moment, Koi just have total control and they're gonna push down mid. This pit now, they don't have any flanks. They've got nothing to work with. They just have to walk in head first, but Koi is just gonna melt straight through them. They're already over the wall. Bo can just tank it. Now, where are you going? Glacial Pistol they possibility. Fight. They're going for the fight. Larson stepping forward. Neon onto the backline. But Shigendo is waiting for him. Nard into the wall and he just can't survive. Laying in wait was the Nard immediately. Vitality shredded. Koi find their kills. They're going to TP to the mid lane as well as look for the chase. Bo trying to get away. Perks, the last two men standing here for Vitality. The shuffle back from Larson. Perks diving away, but Bo cannot have that same luxury. He's caught out. Four kills to Koi as they look to close this one out. They walked into the meat grinder and Koi just destroyed them. Neon tried his best. You can't really fault him. He has to go over that wall and try something. His team can barely walk into the river itself. They don't know the health of the Elder. They just have to get in there. And like you said, Shigen, they're laying in wait. Inhibitors are all falling. Looks like they're going through mid. No top wave left. Ten seconds on Neon. The game won't end, but there's only one nail left to go into this coffin of Vitality because Koi will start up this Elder and then they'll come back even stronger. The entire game they'll have access to this river. How long does it take, Arrow? Photon needs to get in the position to flank. Perks needs to find something. Is he dead? Is going to dead. Dead. He's just dead! Oh my god, oh, man, he's a pink cushion! One glimmer of hope just slammed in an instant. Arrow just lands, Perks is dead. Now they have no chance. Final chapter going in. Have to try though. and assist. Neon has the flash still. Can he survive? Lightning crashes. He tries to dive away from Arrow and Bow. Already falling in the pit though. Glacial Prison not going to be enough to save. The rest of his team. Oh, and Arson. Oh, Arson. He slides and he glides. And only the little kitty cat is left to watch as Koi solidify the win. Clean out the fights. And with two waves pushing in, Koi should claim their third win of the LEC Winter. Folkless from Larson instantly predicts the flash of Neon, makes sure that he seals the deal and gets the kills. That's going to be game. Great showing by Koi. We'll push them up yeah. to three wins here in this tight race. Two spots left, four teams left for the top eight. And Koi just put themselves one step closer. Cleanest game we've seen from Koi this year as they close it out and claim the victory versus Vitality. G2 tomorrow, so they can celebrate this win now. But one more win is the safe space, yeah. the soft lock. Three wins can still be tiebreakers. But yeah, great showing from Koi. You can see the Koi identity again. Marang early game skirmishing jungler. Bot lane just want to push.